I want to ask Angela Gonzalez to come up here and sing the national anthem of our great, great country. So I want everybody to get up and let's honor America. Another applause. You did a fantastic job singing the National Anthem. And I, I have to confess, I used to sing, and I get nervous every time I have to speak or sing, and I'm nervous today, believe it or not, so don't feel you're alone. We are all nervous when we speak, especially in front of a wonderful audience, because we want to be true to our heart and true to our values and what we believe in. And we're very honored to be a part of this community in the city of Brockton, and very honored to be privileged to be our elected officials in the city of Brockton in this country that is a wonderful country. And despite what we hear out of Washington, D.C. with the rhetoric, uh, we do not believe what our president believes, at least most of us do not. And whether you're Republican or Democrat, we are all part of a great community and we have to stick together. And I, I use the analogy, my last name is Mike Brady, I'm not related to Tom Brady from the Patriots. <laughs> But the New England Patriots do not win alone. They win by working as a team together. And we have a great state delegation that works together with Michelle Dubois, Representative Claire Crone, Representative Jerry Cassidy, and also our city councilors and our mayor and our school committee. We all have a great team in Brockton working together on your behalf. And it's great honor to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday today because a lot of his initiatives, he gave his death for our country like Jesus died so we would have faith and be able to go to heaven. Martin Luther King gave his life for what he believed in. And there is no greater gift to give your own life for what you believe in. So we are here for you. We are honored to be here. I'm forever grateful to be our state senator. And if you ever need anything or any ideas that you think we should be doing at the state level or the local level, we work for the residents of our community. So don't be afraid. Any ideas, please contact us because we work for all of you, and we're grateful. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, Aubrey God. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Brady. 
Uh, next up, I'd like to call up uh, one of our state representatives to say a few words, Jerry Cassidy. Thank you very much, and I know Mike Brady. He does not have the voice you have. <laughs> uh, no, I just want to thank Moises very much for hosting this uh, on Martin Luther King's Day. And uh, we should all recognize that Martin Luther King was uh, uh, a man that would uh, bring people together. That's what the, the Brockton is, a melting pot of different communities. And we should all come together to uh, make Brockton a better place. I was over yesterday at the uh, Temple Beth Amuna Martin Luther King celebration, and Gene Derencourt uh, just did a phenomenal job, phenomenal job of what, uh, what this country is all about. Gene, I just want to thank you very much for uh, stressing your heart. What this president has done, and uh, it's totally unacceptable from uh, what he does. But I just want to thank everybody very much, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Consular Rodriguez, and all of you here today to celebrate with us the birth of Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I live by the motto, no one is free when others are oppressed, and I'm oppressed in certain ways, and everyone in this room feels the weight of oppression so often in our lives, and it's very difficult. And I'm just here to remind you that, that we're, we're all together in this. And some of us have a, have a much larger cross to carry in our country right now, where racism seems to be um, being elevated to a point that um, seems like we're, I'm living in the 50s or something. What I would think the world would be like before Martin Luther King showed us the right way and so many civil rights activists. And what I want to challenge each and every one of you to do, and what I challenge myself to do every day, is to not be silent, to stand up, to be like MLK, to be like so many civil rights activists, to be like your parents and your grandparents who fought so hard for these rights that we have and that you have. And as your state representative, I want you to know that I'm going to vote the way you would want me to vote when you're at the table with your families and you're trying to figure out how you can make a better America for yourselves and your children. I'm here for you. I um, know the struggle is real. I want to be uh, a partner in overcoming oppression and making this world a better place for everyone. So I'm happy to be here with you. I take this job seriously, and I think that we all just need to Summon the courage to speak up and do not be silent in the, in the, when we face oppression and prejudice and unfair treatment. And no matter the consequence, we must just keep on with the struggle. And I know that myself and our delegation at the State House from Brockton feels that way. Not everybody at the State House and not everybody in government feels that way. But you have a delegation that does want to help everybody that lives in Brockton and in their relative towns of Easton, West Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater to make a better lives for their children. So I'm here for you. Please feel free to reach out if I can ever be of service. And I want you to know that I'm a partner in our struggle to overcome um, the racism and the unjust treatment that is happening in our world today. Thank you very much. Next up, I'd like to call one of Brockton's councilmen at large, Robert Sullivan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bob Sullivan, and I, I'm here as a counselor at large. I'm joined, of course, by my good friend and fellow counselor at large, Moses Rodriguez. We want to thank Moses for his service to a country. Of course, he was in the Navy, and we want to thank uh, him and the Cape Verdean Association for hosting this yearly event. I want to recognize my, uh, my new counselor at large colleague, Jean Bradley Derencourt, and of course, we had Susan DeCastro here, the new ward counselor from four, and also um, Jack, uh, Jack Lally. 
Um, I think on behalf of the city council and president, I was the president last year, not this year, but President Ianeri had to work today. He had, did not have the day off. But um, I, I came here today, I have three young children. I came here today um, because we need to look at what Dr. King was saying in 1963 when he said, I have a dream. It meant a lot and it means a lot today. It means a lot for our generation. And when we look, and I can say this on the city council, there's 11 of us. I can say right now that we find it despicable and racist tone what Donald Trump has said to our friends from Haiti, our brothers and sisters, and those that come from the African nations. But at the end of the day, he's just one man. This is what it's about. It's the citizens that live in the city, the commonwealth, and the country. We can work together just like Dr. King said work together with grace, dignity, and the struggle. When you look at Julian Bond or John Lewis, people that worked hard for civil rights, they did it to better, not just the present, but the future. And I came here today just to say, I wanna work with you like I always do, and I know all my colleagues do at the State House, City Hall, and it doesn't matter where you come from, we're all immigrants. At the end of the day, the city of Brockton is a, a pot, a melting pot of dedicated, hardworking people that want to work every day to better their lives. And really, really that's what it's about. That's what it's about. So I, I, I just want to say again, we learn a lot from Dr. Martin Luther King and we need to take from that and we need to move forward. And you know what? That man in Washington isn't going to be there forever and we're going to work hard to make sure he's gone soon. But I think today is the day. Yeah, absolutely. Today is a day to represent what Brockton is about, what Dr. King is about, and the boys and girls that are going to perform today, because that's really what it's about, the boys and girls, our future. God bless you all. Thank you. And last but not least, no introduction, I guess. You guys know who Moses is? I just want to thank you. Uh, I didn't want to do this, but I'm just buying in a little time for the, little, for the kids to come up. But um, I don't know if you, those of you that came here three years ago when we first started doing this, and one of the promises that I, I personally made to the citizens of this city is that we are going to hold this event every year. Every year on Martha Luther King Day. I, I congratulate those that put together breakfasts and marches and some of the other things, but to me, it's important for us to celebrate the day that this man was honored and given a day to celebrate his birthday. So that's why it doesn't matter next year if nobody wants to show up and it's gonna be me by myself, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. And because I think it's just that important for us to, uh, to come here and celebrate a man who, uh, he didn't have to give, he didn't have to do all the stuff that he did. You know, he could just sit back, you know, done his preaching, uh, taking care of his congregation quietly, uh, and do what 99.99999% of us do. You know, go along to get along. But he chose not to. He chose to stand up and fight for the injustice that divided this country. And today, we have a divider in chief in the, in the White House. Um, not, as someone that actually served in the military, I'd be ashamed to call him my commander-in-chief. So I'm gonna call him the divider-in-chief. And, and someone that, and, and you know what? I'm actually a little upset at the, not the Republican Party, but the Democrats in Washington who don't call this man for what he is. He basically is representing 35 to 45% of Americans. And somehow, they, the Democrats, are allowing him to talk about how what he's doing is doing it for the American people. When I last checked, I know he's not very good at math because that's how he filed bankruptcy a whole bunch of times. But when you look at somebody, someone that was elected by less than 50% of the voters, he's not representing the American people. He's representing a segment of the American people. So for the rest of us, on the upper 50%, who did not vote for him. It's important for us, one, not to really give a lot of credence to what he says, because he has absolutely no clue. Someone whose wife is still at the airport looking for her luggage because she just came over. 
someone who is the son of an immigrant from Germany. So for someone to get up and say some things against uh, immigrants, you can tell that this man, you don't have to be a psychiatrist to figure out that his mind is not in the right place. So it's important for us to somehow look at him and say, you know what, where I come from, an African nation, is not an S whole country. Because we might not have the resources of the uh, so-called Norwegian countries or some of the European countries, but we are, he has no idea what Cape Verde is all about. You know, um, for those of you who might not know, Cape Verde, uh, two presidential elections ago, the election was decided by 12 votes. There was not a single shot fired, there was not a single killing in the streets somewhere. So we're not an asshole country. We are a country that believes in law. We are a country that believes in people. And 99% of the African nations, I mean, people here in America talk about Africa like it's, uh, you know, like, like it's Avon, you know? Not realizing that there's 56 nations in Africa. Not realizing that the, the world would not be around if it wasn't for Africa. Because the mother of humanity is in Africa. So for us to sit here and badmouth the continent that gave birth to all of us, to me, is shameful. And it goes to show how ignorant our president is. And as Bob Sullivan said, there's no, there's no need for speeches. There's no need for us to, uh, to go out of our way, condemn them with this, condemn them with that. You know, 2018 is coming. And we all know people in states that have Republican representatives, Republican senators, and it's up to us to make sure that those that we leave in Washington are willing to fight and defend our causes. So we gotta get on the phone, we gotta work with our folks to make sure that those individuals are out of there. And in 2020, we make sure that the divider in chief can go divide his own household. Thank you. I, I just wanna... Uh, Bob Sullivan has actually introduced some of my colleagues in government, so I just want to thank you, you guys for coming. Uh, we have a wonderful little, I don't know exactly because I didn't quite hear what the kids are going to do, but they're going to do something for us, and then we have uh, Bishop uh, Branch who's going to come up here and do his thing, you know? And I, um, I hope that um, you, you all can continue to come because don't embarrass me and let, and let me be here by myself next year because it'll be kind of embarrassing. I don't know if the band will come, if it's just me. But I, I want to make sure that, uh, that the rest of you guys come along. So I want to, do you want me to introduce the kids? I don't know what they're going to do. You, you do your thing? You want to do your thing? You know what? Angela, ever since I taught her how to sing, because I, I actually taught her how to sing. That's why she sang so well. And it was either me or her. So um, the vote was pretty close. It was, it was like a, a Trump thing, you know? I won the, uh, she won the popular vote, but I won the college. So look what happened, you know? But anyway, so here's Angela again. Have everybody give a round of applause one more time for all of the people of government that we have here today. It wasn't just one or two or three that's actually walked here, so give them a nice round of applause for being here. We appreciate you guys. You guys come every year, and thanks for the nice, kind, and strong words that everybody had to say. Um, no offense to uh, Moses and his speech, but um, we are actually going to move on to, in my opinion, the best part of this program which is uh, the kids. And um, as most of you guys know, the k Association, they have an after-school program that is between the ages of kindergarten all the way up to high school. And these are some of our star pupils from there, and they're coming to um, just give us a couple of strong words um, in some poems. So the first, we're gonna have a collaborative poem. I have a dream that I can become anything and everything I want to be. I have a dream that I can become a better person. I have a dream that my family stays healthy. I have a dream that my family will be happy for me. 
I have a dream that my family will support and encourage me. I have a dream that my friends are loyal. I have a dream that my family and friends always take care of me. I have a dream that my friends are achieved all things that come their way. Oh, I have a dream that I can teach kids. Oh, I have a dream that this world will be a better place. I have a dream that all children will grow up and be what they want to be. I have a dream that all children will live their dreams and have a happy family. I have a dream that grown-ups stay safe. I have a dream that grown-ups will stop starting wars. I have a dream that grown-ups will realize children can help too. I have a dream that start to treat each other the same. I have a dream that people will start to be brave, respectful, and have courage. I have a dream that people will start having more respect in this world. Oh, I have a dream to help my family and friends. Oh, I have a dream that this life would be a better for less fortunate kids. I have a dream that people will find peace and harmony. I have a dream that people will find new solutions. I have a dream that people will find hope. I have a dream that people will find where their past begins and help others. I have a dream that people will find love and respect for one another. I have a dream that people will learn that people are made differently and stop bullying. I have a dream that people will learn to be their own person. I have a dream that this world will be no violence. I have a dream that people will learn I have a dream that there will be a, a world, peace. world peace. I have a dream that there will be a time when people enjoy hands together and talk things out. I, I have, have a dream. dream. You, you have, have a dream. dream. We all have a dream. Dr. King dreamed, treat people kindly, do what is fair, work for all people, show that you care. These are the ways if we work as a team to remember the man who said, I have a dream. Next up, we have Ashley. Thank you. 
a man need a man named King. Once there was a man named King. They called him Martin Luther King. Hallelujah. I don't know where from where. I don't know where from. I think the king was wise and he was good. They called this king. This this came from. He believed in brotherhood. Hallelujah. He had a dream for you and me. He knew that man must be free. Hallelujah. The freedom roam and where it will. But Martin sang a freedom song. Hallelujah. We must keep his dream alive. Freedom song. Freedom song can never die. Hallelujah. Once there was a man in the king, they called him unto the king. Hallelujah. Freedom, freedom. Twinkle, twinkle, freedom, freedom. Let it rain, let it rain, said Dr. King. Let us live in, in harmony, peace and love from you and me. Freedom, freedom, let it rain, let it rain, said Dr. King. And last up, we have Isaiah. His dream moves on. Today is a day we all say in honor of Martin Luther King. Wherever people fight to be free, his name is remembered with dignity. When black people weren't treated right, he stood strong to lead the fight. He fought with love, no guns or, or darts. He changed people's minds and their hearts. But sometimes people did not like his words. He wasn't, he was taken away to a better world. Yet his dream was on that all can be free when we knock down the walls between you and me. Martin Luther King's life did not last, but his dream and spirit are free at last. Hello everyone, can everyone please have a seat? Please have a seat, young folks. All the young people, you need to come up in the front. All the young people, anyone that is under the age of 17, proceed to the front. It's important that the children come up to the front and hear words that emanate from people that are messengers of our Lord. Young people, young people, young people. Young people, young people, let's go. So my name is Bishop Tony Branch. 
I am chair of the Diversity Commission for the City of Brockton. I am a representative on the Southeastern Regional Vocational School Committee. I am vice president of Haitian Community Partners. I am here on the board of directors of the Cape Verdean Association. And most importantly, I am a man of God. I'm joined here today with Mark Lindy, who's the general manager of Brockton Community Access. He's always behind the camera. But I want to say we need to give uh, Community Access a hand clap for covering these events. It's very important. Come on, give them a hand clap. There are so many elderly, disabled, and low-income families that are at home that cannot come to these events. But I bear witness that they are watching us, or they watch these recordings on um, uh, Brockton Community Access, so we must give them their due. Amen? Amen? Now, for those of you who know me, who've heard me speak before, and may not heard me, I am a preacher. And I am a preacher of the so-called black church. I hate the fact that they call it the black church because that is meaningless. We all serve a God and he has no race. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So I may go a little crazy. Now what that means is my jacket may come off, my cross may flip, and I might sweat a little bit. And if it get real good, I might roll on the floor. Are y'all going to be with me? Yes. Anybody in here ever be in a Pentecostal church? No? Oh, you might be in for something this afternoon. Somebody give God uh, a hand clap, clap please. And so I have notes, but I also need to be led by the Spirit. I want to first thank uh, our director, Moses. Where's Moses? Put your hand up, Moses. Moses Rodriguez. I want to first thank, thank you Moses, I want to first thank Moses Rodriguez for putting this together three years ago. It is not just his hospitality, it is his spirit that has said that we need to recognize Reverend, because people forget that, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on the day of his birthday. Give Moses a hand clap. I want to thank the diverse board. I'm going to clean some things up. Anybody knows me, I'm a straight shooter. I'm going to let it come out because I'm speaking the truth. I want to thank the board of directors of the Cape Verdean Association. One of the most diverse boards in the city of Brockton representing every community. Give the board a hand clap. I want to thank the elected officials that showed up here today. I want to thank the clergy, activists, and most importantly, I want to thank the young people who in their spirit will continue on the vision of Dr. Clean, Dr. King, excuse me. I'm going to clean something up. Everybody always talk about the dream, the dream, the dream. Well, let me explain something to you really quickly before I go into my thing. It is okay to have a dream, but you must do what? Wake up from that dream. Somebody say amen. Y'all not talking back to me. Black church, y'all not say amen. amen. And when you wake up from that dream, you have to become visionaries. Come on and talk to me. Oh, uh, y'all not, I, I heard somebody over here, somebody over here to say amen. amen. So if you have the vision of Dr. King, you truly become drum majors of justice. If you believe that, clap your hands. So today is, today is about equality, dignity, and justice. But that does not come by way of words, it comes by way of your actions. Do you believe that? Clap your hands. Now normally in a church, whether it's the basement or upstairs, you have a prayer. Now we didn't do that today, so I want to ask you all to stand on your feet and allow me to bless us in prayer, and then I will be about five minutes I'm not going to be long because y'all look like y'all hungry, and I am too. Y'all ready? Bow your heads. Father God, your children, sons and daughters of Abraham, they stand before you in their spirit, each and every one of us, believing that in a common affirmation that by our hearts we will do the right things in terms of justice. Lord, we believe by faith. We loose anything that is not of you. God, we're going to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now that wasn't so bad, was it? No. 
Yeah, y'all thought I was going to go on for 10 minutes. Sit on down. Hey, man. So I need somebody or a bunch of y'all in here. We normally start off by doing I need you to look at the person on your right side and say these words. Look at the person on your right side, say these words. We need to go back to the source. Ah, y'all not talking back to me. I'm going to do this one more time. We need to go back to the source. Say it now. We need to go back to the source. I need somebody to look to somebody on the left side and say these words. You may not look like me. Y'all like ain't talking back. You may not look like me. You may not look like me. But the bishop says, we family. If you believe that, give a hand clap. So today we celebrate Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. King would have been 89 years old today. There's a very good chance because of health sciences and technology, he would be alive with us. Say amen. amen. But what y'all don't realize, it took 32 years to get this federal holiday. And even when Ronald Reagan signed it into law in 1986, it wasn't until the year 2000 that every state recognized it as, as, as it being a holiday. Somebody say that's a shame. But we got to know today that sometimes it takes a little bit of time or a long time to have righteousness. Do y'all believe that? Yes. Do y'all believe that? Ah, yes. oh, I hear somebody talking to me now. So I want to let you all know today that if Dr. King was alive, what would he say? Do y'all know what he would say? Do y'all know what would he say? Yeah. What would he say? Yeah. He would say something about a dream? I think if Dr. King was alive today, he would say something about the president and the megaphone, where he said to police officers that when you put in suspects in the car, it's okay to knock them upside the head. I think Dr. King would talk about that. I think Dr. King would talk about children of undocumented immigrants and whether or not they should be sent back home to a country that they don't know. Who's talking to me in here? Say amen. amen. I think that he would be talking about the women who have been subject to lewd and abusive behavior. Behavior. Men in power that are taking advantage of them. That's what I think Dr. King will be talking about. Who's with me here? Say amen. amen. I think Dr. King will be talking about un unarmed black and brown youth. Oh, I'm going to talk about it today. And who, who simply because of the pigmentation of their skin color, they are labeled as criminal. They are labeled as racist. They're, excuse me, as worthless. They are labeled as people that are, are, are deserve injustice. That's what I think Dr. King would be talking about who's with me say amen. amen I'm tired of my I'm tired of the pigmentation of my skin making me look like I'm guilty of something y'all with me say amen. amen so what would he say about the looming health issue with our children when you look at the babies that are in here did y'all know something called the chip program called the children's health and insurance program they don't mind that that program is going to end on next week they don't mind the children that are in here may not have health insurance I think Dr. King would be talking about that if you believe that say amen, amen. so I say on a national level I'm going to talk about you Mitch McCall I want to know Mitch McConnell are you friend or foe I want to know because I know that a real friend y'all know what friends are if you know what friends are raise your hand Oh, y'all ain't be. I hope y'all all y'all need to be raising your hand. If you know what a friend is, raise your hand. Friendship is an association. It is a bond. It is collaboration. Do y'all have friends? You can say yes. Real friends never lead you into troubled waters. Real friends never leave you in troubled times. Real friends rescue you from trouble. I want to know on a federal level, why aren't we being rescued by the federal government? Why aren't we being rescued? Mitch McConnell, I heard y'all need to say amen. amen. Brockton wants to know, are you friend or foe? Mitch McConnell, Brockton wants to know, Speaker Paul Ryan, are you friend or foe of justice? Y'all, are y'all still with me? Y'all look like you're not with me. If you want to tell me to sit down, I'll sit down. Come on now. Now, i got to ask questions. I know that there's some that may get upset with me in here, but closer to home, are you friend or foe of diversity, Brockton? 
Are you friend or foe of people like me moving in your neighborhood? Are you friend or foe of, uh, of us challenging the use of marijuana by our young people? What you all don't understand, they call it Paja. It is killing our young people, driving them crazy, unable to concentrate in school, looking and making them act crazy. If you're friend or foe to the issue of drugs in our city, you need to stand up. If you're a friend, stand up. If you are a friend to deal with the issues of drug abuse in the city of Brockton, if you are a friend to deal with the issue of violence, clap your hands. Go ahead, y'all sit down. Y'all not with me. I want to know, are you a friend or foe of the American rainbow? Diversity is our strength. Or are you willing to accept the hurricane of bigotry, sexism, and a return to 19th century racism? For those of you who don't know what 19th century racism is, I'm going to give you an example as a black man. That means that if I'm having a conversation with a white person and something I say is inappropriate, I get hung from a tree. Do y'all want to go back to that? 19th century racism is that if I wanted to go into a restaurant just to simply have some French toast and sausages, there's signs that says white only. Are you looking to go back to that? White's 19th century racism is that if I upset or, or if, I, if I looked at a white woman, I found her attractive, I could end up tied down and put into a pond with cement blocks. Are you looking to go back to that? No. So are you a friend or a foe of justice? A friend. Come on, there. Yeah, see, the young people need to talk back to me. America is all long overdue to end racism. Let me tell you why. Part of this is what Moses had initially spoke about. Let me explain to you that in 1986, we found out through our genetic code, it was startling to some, it was disturbing to some whites, that in a nutshell, every single soul in here is from Africa. Did you hear me what I'm telling you? So now I'm gonna ask you, if you are from Africa, raise your hand. Oh, white folks, come on now. Come on now. If you originate from Africa, raise your hand. There you go. It turns out that nearly everyone, based upon their DNA, scientists have provided uncontroversial evidence, especially with respect to healthcare. And they call this evidence, evidence-based. It turns out that the man's DNA is the Y chromosome. And the Y chromosome has been passed down from fathers to sons for thousands of years. It turns out that the same chromosomes that are in men, amen, when all, they can be traced all the way back to a single African 60,000 years ago. I come to tell America today, you are lying when you say that the black man or the African has nothing to contrib contribute because you, in fact, are my brother. You, in fact, are my cousin. You have to understand that Dr. King fought for this justice. Had he been alive, amen, he would have talked about brotherhood. But Dr. King died before the science was complete. I'm telling you that in 1986, come on somebody, we found out that we all are related, that we all are friends, that we're all a family. So we got the end of the definition of racism. Tell somebody it's got to end. Now, now, now for my beautiful women. It turns out that in the women, they have something called mito, uh, mitochondria. Mitochondria. A woman passes this out, passes this down to both man and to woman. It turns out that this particular gene, I'm talking about DNA. For those of you who like to watch those criminal programs where the DNA finds somebody guilty and not guilty, I'm coming to let you know today that we are not guilty in terms of injustice because we all are one family. It turns out that this particular gene of the mitochondria 
was traced back to one single African woman. This woman lived 150,000 to 200,000 years ago. That woman, they call her the scientist Eve, that woman that they talk about in the original testament of Abraham, that woman was an African woman. So it doesn't matter in this place today if you're black or if you're white, you come from the same mama. If you believe that, show justice. I'm almost done. I told you I'm Pentecostal. I can't hold it back. So, so, so uh, you have to understand that the labeling of people is a new phenomenon. Initially, we were labeled. We were, it was done by either ethnicity or religion. Do you hear me, what I'm telling you? But according to Stanford University, Professor George uh, Frickerstein, he explained that the, he explained in his book, the historical origins of development of racism. This was done, this was done for us to be labeled first as heathens. In other words, they said based upon the Bible, we were descendants of Ham and we were supposed to always be enslaved. Someone say, that's a lie. That's a lie. I'm not hearing you say that's a lie. That's, a lie. that's not one young child that's going to walk out here today who's going to believe because of their skin color they're worthless. Because of your skin color, you're a criminal. Because of your skin color, there's going to be injustice. You will not leave here as you came in. Shout I'm going, to have I'm going to have justice. The reason why, the reason why they talked about racism or race, the reason why race became a part of the dictionaries of the English was it was used to, it was used to justify uh, 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 us as being separate species. But you already knew that I explained to you, according to our DNA, we are in fact one species. We are, we are in fact originally humanity, shout humanity. As the moral compass began to change in this country regarding the tide of enslaving slaves, excuse me, enslaving slaves, the American journalists began to say that uh, that we had to have racism or races because we had to have black people as different species. In other words, I am well, I would have been one fifth of a man. I would have been nothing to my two daughters that are in here. I would have been nothing to the boys and girls that I should be an example to. I would have been nothing to people walking on the street. That would have been nothing. As a matter of fact, a cockroach would have had more justice than me. If you believe that America needs to delete the term racism, you need to say, let it go. Let it go. As, oh God. So we began our conversation based upon what Moses suggested, that we need to return to the source. You have to understand that if you return to the source, you would understand what Dr. King was saying in terms of brotherhood. I'm almost done. Dr. King said we must learn to live together as brothers or we are going to perish as fools. Are y'all hearing me today? I don't know about you that if I go down, if I go down, I want to go down protecting my children. Uh, God, but when I listen to what Dr. King was saying, when the words came to reverence in my mind, I understood what he was explaining in terms of brotherhood. And so it's not only about Ariana and Brianna, it's about the children that are over here. It's about the children that are over there. It's about the children that are out there. We got to form a brotherhood. We may have disagreements like any other family, but you have to believe at the end of the day, we must combine ourselves in terms of justice. If you believe that, say justice. Mm -hmm. With the mitochondria Eve. With the mitochondria Eve, I intend to rest my case. We are connected as one. We are cousins of each other. I want to let you know, where's my cousin, Mike Brady? I got my stand-up Mike Brady, Senator Brady. He, Mike Brady is my cousin. Now, Mike, now some of you all who has, has the, the figure of race, you could say he's my white cousin. Well, that's all right. Until we start deleting things, that's going to be okay. Mike Brady is, I'm sure we're related. It may be 15 cousins down, but we're related. Do y'all hear me what I'm saying? And so when you see Mike Brady, don't see a separation between he and I. See him as my family. If you believe that, shout. I believe it. Thank you, Mike. The word family is defined as people that have common ancestry. Amen? Amen. DNA binds us in the biological, but DNA doesn't make our decisions. We must now move from the dream. Did you hear me? 
black preachers, white preachers, they all preachers need to be starting to talk this. We talk too much about dreaming. Wake up. It is time for us now to become visionaries, leading the fight against un un the unrighteousness against humanity. We must now fight in the spirit of the no, uh, y'all hear, are y'all with me? We must fight in the spirit of that old Negro hymn. And what is that? We are free at last. We are free at last. Thank God Almighty. We are free at last. Thank you all. Can I have one more loud round of applause for the keynote speaker? Thank you very much. He sweated. He sweated because he did such a good job. Great job today. Great job. Next up, I would like to call a member of the Cape Verde Association board to come up and have a few words. That's thank you. I'm not as good at the mic as Angela is, so um, Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Lopes, Secretary of the Board of the Cape Verdean Association. Um, just on behalf of the board, on behalf of our President Joe Miranda, I wanted to just take a moment to thank all of you for coming out. Um, I think most importantly, we've heard a lot today about what the organization does, um, Moses' idea behind this event, and we've talked a lot about Martin Luther King's vision, his dream, but I think most importantly, what Martin Luther King talks about is service, right? So when we talk about the people that are here, the elected officials, members of the church, that we all leave here with that message of service. When we talk about the youth like Bishop did, what are we doing every single day to serve and to be better leaders in our community? And I am just grateful to be a part of this wonderful organization that every single day is looking to serve. Um, an immigrant community, an expanding community, a diverse community. So on behalf of this organization, um, we continue to serve you and we're here for you in all the efforts that you do. Thank you again to our staff who helped put this wonderful event together. Can we get a round of applause for Angela and the rest of the group? Again, Moses, thank you, our executive director who um, always continues to outserve us all. And our elected officials, may you continue to move forward in that mission of service. And God may bless all of you and walk forward with you. And thank you all. Thank you again, Nancy, for coming up. Can I have a round of applause for Nancy, please? And with, with all these round of applause, I think the only people that we didn't thank was every individual person that is here today. You guys came out, you guys could be at home. I know it's cold out, I see some flurries out tonight. Uh, but you guys took the time to come out here. So I'd like a round and very loud round of applause for every single person that came out here today. Thank you very much. We really do appreciate it. And we hope to see all of you guys again next year and the year after that so we don't leave Moses here by himself with the band. <laughs> and um, next up, we do have a little bit of refreshments for you guys, some food here on the side. So please help yourself. And also we have the great band here that's today that's gonna be providing us some music. So if you guys wanna dance, I know I'm looking for a dance partner. So if anybody will come dance with me, Feel welcome to dance and join us, enjoy the music and enjoy the food, okay guys?